Good evening guys! Welcome, welcome to the Overland Show. Once again, we are here tonight spending the time with you to talk about everything fun, adventurous, cars, rigs, and we're excited to be here and we're excited that you're here with us tonight. Um, you know what guys, we have something that's, uh, special that's prepared for you tonight. We're doing our first Vagal Rig Review. A brand new pickup just in store for you and we will get to that shortly. You know guys, if we haven't met by the way, I'm Joel Pedro. I'm the Chief Adventure Officer of Overland Kings. So we run a little adventure shop uh, specialized in uh, vehicle overland rigs. Yep. In short, we help you guys prepare for the adventure lifestyle with your vehicle. So again, we'd like to welcome you. Welcome to the Overland Show. Yeah, so, you know guys, just if, if it's the first time for you to join us, we thank you. <laughs> thank you for joining us. You know, a few episodes back, we did a truck comparo, and we were able to review seven trucks but behind the desk. No, behind the computer. No, live stream, just for you. And uh, we did a virtual test, and to make a long story short, we did it in an Overland's perspective, and tonight, tonight's review is a result of that episode. You know, one of the, if you watch that episode, we did a different type of review. It's not your normal pickup truck review. And uh, we were, we picked some interesting trucks uh, for that show that actually won a couple of things in the categories of being a good overland truck. And after that show, um, one of those companies gave us a ring and tonight's a result of that. So if, by the way guys, if this interests you and all of the things we're talking about is something you'd like to see more, please, 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 please don't forget to hit the subscribe button or ring that bell if you're on YouTube. Click the follow and like button if you're on Facebook live stream, right? And that's at Overland Kings. And with that, let me introduce you 
my co-host, an advertising director, an overlander, and a brother of Christ. A brother in Christ, Mr. Jake Soriano. What's, What's up, up Jake? Bro? It's good to be back. Another Tuesday, another exciting show. Hello, hello, hello. Belated happy birthday, bro. Oh, yes. Hey, guys, why don't you uh, greet our one and only Mr. Overland King? A happy birthday in the comments section. Oh, thank you, Jake. Thank you. Happy birthday to myself. <laughs> and my camera is doing some funny things to me. Baka yun ang kailangan mo pang birthday gift. <laughs> Bagong camera. My camera is blurring me out. <laughs> Guys, uh, please don't be like my camera. Don't blur us out yet. You know, we love to spend time with you. Yes. Oh, uh, well, welcome guys to the show. It's uh, another exciting Tuesday. Um, if you're joining us for the first time, why don't you say hello? And for those who've been watching us for the last 10 weeks, uh, why don't you also hit us up in the comments section and say hey and let us know where you're watching from, who you're with, what your plans are, what you had for dinner. You know, just 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 give us some comments, bro. <laughs> All right. Yeah. How's your so, week? You know what, Jake? Yeah, our week, my week, my week's yeah, been okay. fun. We've been uh, we've been doing some stuff, something different. All right. <laughs> like and what? my birthday week, well, you know, like eating a lot. <laughs> That's always good. I heard you had uh, you had something that you haven't had for a while, like last night for dinner. Yeah, I had I had Kiko Fuji takeout. So that mm. was a that was a good birthday celebration. <laughs> Hi Justin. Hi Paulito. Thank you for. Uh, Happy belated happy birthday from Sir Paulito. Yes. Thank you for Thanks the greet. For joining Thank you. Us. Thank you for joining us tonight. We appreciate it. Yes. Yeah, Justin. I'm sorry, Justin. Out of focus po. Out of focus. Sana okay po. na po. Baka mag gusto mag donate si Justin ng bagong camera kay Mr. Birthday Boy. Pwede naman. Pwede naman. Let's get the show rolling, Jake. Let's do it. I'm excited. You know, you know what, what, guys? When we were where we were doing this, the first uh, the first banner. If you if, have you guys seen the banner, <laughs> Jake, I gotta show this banner again. Yeah, okay, let's yeah, show yeah, that yeah. again. Yeah. Oh, we had a couple of comments on our Facebook banner. No, nope, somebody thought a lot of you guys were trying to guess what pickup truck it is that we're reviewing tonight, and we haven't revealed it yet, have we? <laughs> Not yet. Not just yet. In a while. So guys, uh, why don't you message or comment us right now. Comment there. What do you think is the truck we're reviewing tonight? Since we haven't exposed it yet or we haven't revealed it yet. Click on the comment box. Let us know what you guys think on what truck we are reviewing tonight. By the way, on our comments the on the page. <laughs> yes. By the way, Luigi said... Uh, the truck we are reviewing tonight is an F-150. Well, good okay, guess. Good guess. But we will show you in a bit. We'll F-150. You know okay, Sir Julius. Julius Caesar says F-150. Okay, okay. Okay. More guesses. Talagang one truck lang, guys. We really want this truck, huh? Just one truck that we're reviewing. We're gonna let you wait a little bit. Don't worry, we've just been two minutes into the show. Wait a little. Just a little Liam bit. I just want to say hi to Liam, hi to, hi to Rafi, hi to my friend Andro. Thanks guys for joining. <laughs> Again, leave your comments guys. What do you think we're reviewing tonight? Na we pressure ako sa, no? There we go, there we go. You're cutting out. Your, your, your audio is cutting out. My audio is still cutting out? Is this better? That's better. Alright. Okay. Our tech, F our tech thing, Justin Uy. F510. F510. What car is that, bro? What is that, Ferrari? <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? Yes. While you guys are commenting there, I'll tell you a backstory. Backstory. Go, go ahead. Story. We, we did an episode, Jake, remember, two episodes ago to find out what truck in the country suits, uh, is best suited for overland uh, travel. Yes. And we call and in that episode we called out a couple of brands, yes, and to see if you know just to to tell them hey you know what if you want us to review it, um, 
uh, what do you call it? Uh, then show maybe throw us a car or and we can review it. Pero natatawa na sa comments eh. Justin says Jeep Gladiator na lang. Okay. Hindi <laughs> pa nga launch eh. Jeep Gladiator. <laughs> and uh, Liam, Liam, yes, I remember. So this car was uh, one of the popular choices we had, the K25. Uh, so yeah, I'm not gonna spill the beans just yet. <laughs> Atrun says the new Hilux. We wish it's a new Hilux that we we get our hands on first. <laughs> see, see si Brian Mercedes X Class. Uh, I haven't seen truck. yet. I haven't seen yet D Max. Wala pa nang nag guest ng D Max. Wala pa. <laughs> but maybe uh, guys, but, you know what? We were when we we tried this truck out. I think we were Joel and I were both pleasantly surprised. Uh, with how it performed and actually the overall uh, outcome of the, the day that we had with it. Um, yep. Yeah, it was actually uh, something to be excited for. And yeah, <laughs> can't wait to just reveal it. You know, guys, if you're joining us again, this is, I want, I want you to be able to experience this. This, this is like epic. This is groundbreaking. This is gonna be the first, I think, okay, correct me if I'm wrong. This is gonna be the first truck review that's done live stream, okay? Most of the truck reviews you are watching are YouTube recorded videos, guys. I don't think anyone, at least in the country, has ever done a live stream video that's reviewing a truck, right? And it, I, I don't know, Jake, I, I get excited just doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Same here. You know, guys, actually, this is, I'm not in my room. This is a green screen. This is going to fall and reveal a car in the back. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I just wish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so the, the good thing about this types of review, the, which we want to experiment with you guys, which is, this show is about you anyway, is you sh we encourage you guys to throw us your comments and questions while we do this review. And let's see how far we can take it because we got all the data of this truck that we're about to show you. And this is the time, like, you know, let's discuss. Throw me what you like, throw me what you don't like, you know, and this is the perfect time to do that with this truck. And we will show you in a bit. Yeah, but you know, you one know, thing that I've learned while, while doing this, Jake, what? Yeah, na gano, eh. Like, it's hard to be objective pala. I don't know about you. It's hard to be objective doing a review. That um, was the mo I one of the most challenging things. I agree. Diba? There, there are always gonna be certain biases. What works for me, what works for you. And I realized that it's so hard to do some to do justice to a car by just sitting there and giving your take on it. Because the guys who were behind this vehicle have done so much to prepare the car, has done mm -hmm. so much to launch the car, and we're there as a consumer. Well, in my case, I'm both a consumer, a reviewer, an overlander. So I'm straddling these four emotions or five emotions to give to give you guys the best probable emotional, reason eh? to check so out emotion, yeah, eh? to, to get this car. <laughs> and I realized, <laughs> if I go anywhere too much to the other side, it might come out wrong. And I don't want you to get that impression. So, you know, before we head into it, I just want to put some criteria into this. Um, the test that we're putting out here is an overlander's perspective. So this is not your usual car review. At the end of the day, if you want just specs and how it rides and, you know, you want all the data on the numbers. There are, I'm sure all of these trucks that we're reviewing will have tons of data out there. But what we're going to give you is an overlander's perspective. So is it good for adventure? Is it suitable to travel long distances? This is the perspective that we want to show you on uh, these types of reviews that we're doing. And I hope at the end of this review, whether it be normal or not, because I don't know if the company that we're going to do it for will be happy with it or not, but we, we hope that you appreciate, our viewers appreciate that this is, we try to be as objective as possible to give that perspective so that you have a different way of looking at these cars. So yes. I thought I'd throw that in there before we go. What do you think, Jake? Yes, I, I completely agree. We really had to uh, remind ourselves um, of what we're doing and what's the purpose uh, and also the value of what we're getting. And overall, like we really, it was something that I think Joel and I had to remind ourselves constantly throughout the ride, and put ourselves in that perspective of an overlander and what we get out of it. And you know what? There were certain things. Uh, there were actually a good number of things. I think Joel that you'd, you'd mention. I think later on in the video, 
that really help in terms of the overland expect uh, overlanders uh, take and how that person how an overlander would use that vehicle so yeah it's exciting and why don't we just uh slowly uh not slowly why don't we just reveal it so ladies and gentlemen indulge in the next five minutes this is our live stream review <laughs> Play it, Jake. Maxus T60. We're driving now on some highway driving and some uh, twisties here at Panay. And the impressions is this. The, the steering is on the light side. And so don't expect the German type of feel where it becomes heavier and you're able to um, feel the car more. The gearing, the steering of the Maxus is geared towards more city driving. So uh, given that it has a layer light feel. Given that though, I must note that the gear ratios for this car, for me for overlanding, I, I like it. Um, it, uh, it gives you the torque down low. Uh, you're getting the pull like right now. I'm getting a pull at around, just by experience, below 2000 RPM. And on an uphill, it pulls quite well. Um, when you look at the rear though, this is where you have to get used to the Maxxis. The T60 gives you a rating, I'd say a rating of 8 out of 10 in terms of ride comfort, meaning 10 is on the stiff side. So without anything on the tray, you'd be hard pressed for the ride comfort. So this is going to be on the stiff side. In terms of acceleration, you're not going to win any drag wars. But I would say that the power is adequate. Um, you're not gonna get hang up in the hill. Um, we're now driving here and uh, overtaking and uh, keeping up to highway speeds or just pulling up through these hills or is not is not a problem in the T60. So I, I like that about it. Uh, NVH. Let's talk about noise, right? Because comfort is the seats here. In the NVH, you could definitely hear that rumble in the engine. Um, it's not disturbing where I think it'll make you irritated over a long drive, but you can definitely hear the engine. For the seats, the seats are on the... It's leather, but it's on the firm side. So it's uh, the durable type. So I think it's something that will last you a longer time. But uh, definitely, this is not the plush type of leather seats that you would want. Air conditioning is good. Uh, it has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Though we must note that we did have a hard time pairing up with this, and but once you get it paired up, everything works well. As a as a passenger so far, I have a uh, well. It's a little bumpy to be honest, but you know what? The, the chair is pretty comfy. The aircon's gold. Mm. Cup holder wise, I'm complete. Uh, I, I haven't had a chance to sleep, but I'm sure I could sleep. Uh, in this passenger seat, it's not as bad as I expected it to be in terms of ride comfort. The plus side of the stiffer suspension load gives more. you load more loading stuff. Yes. On the flip side, also like it's flatter on the curves. What we're going to talk about now guys is a little bit about the interior. Okay, so first impressions, once I opened the door, I immediately saw that the layout was nice and it also had a has a premium look to it. But of course they had to save somewhere. So you can't have a 1.3 car without also saving a little bit. So if you try to touch the material, maybe it doesn't feel as premium and but it looks premium but it doesn't feel that way one thing i like about the interior everything's modern i like how the ship knob looks 
premium, right? It gives that knobby feel. I also like that they thought of your arm, right? You see this feature? So you can extend your arms or during your long drives, you can have that. It has uh, USB ports that are made available. Now, let me give you two things, or maybe three things, maybe three things that I, that can be improved from Maxis. And one, I think fit and finish uh, can still be improved. Everything looks quite well screwed together, but there, is, there are things that I feel like can be improved. For example, like this center console moves a little. Yes, it's solid, but it could be solid. And then what's that? I, I see these two slots and I'm like, what happens if my coins fall in there? Where do we go? Like, it's a card holder though. It's a card holder, it's right. Card okay, card holder. <laughs> card hold, it's a card holder, but the coins when you go in there, you're never, ever, ever, ever going to get it back. I was expecting to have, um, maybe can put a leather steering wheel on it. There's a urethane steering wheel, if I'm not mistaken. So I just make the driver feel more, you know, for more premium. And uh, the last thing maybe that can be improved, there's some panel gaps. If you look at these panel gaps, right? Um, hopefully this is not every Maxus T60, but I think this is just one of the things that you can watch out for if you're buying one. Make sure that panel gaps in there. I'm sure that can be fixed. But aside from that, everything's great in this car. And I actually do like how it looks in the interior. One thing that I really like about the Maxus is the overall style of it. And especially the front grille. To me, it has an aggressive look. That's something I like about it. We were actually checking this out and while I was shooting it as well, uh, during our, our, our day to day, uh, I always find my, found myself appreciating the, the overall look of the car. Uh, one thing that I don't like about the exterior is the rims. So I would rather swap out the rims, but the problem is at the moment there's nothing that can fit it. So the size of these, okay, what are they Joel? 6 by 130. 6 by 130, which I learned uh, is a very difficult size dimension to, to find a rim for. So Black Rhino offers a lot of uh, options in terms of rim sizes and dimensions, but for specifically for this vehicle, there's, no, there's none that would fit it. None yet. None yet. So I'm going to give you the two things I like and maybe the two things that I don't like too much about the exterior of the Maxxis T60. So here we go. First thing that I like, Max has thought about these footsteps to get into the pickup bed. See here? They put those gaps there so you can step up to your car, to your pickup. So that's quite handy. I also like, check this bed out. I also like that they put the spray liner on. That makes it extra durable. So if you load stuff when you're overlanding, no problem. So they thought about the bed. Extra protection. I always like that over the plastic liners that a lot of the other brands do. I just prefer a spray-on liner. This is just me. It also comes with the tow hooks. Four of them. I can see it from the pickup bed. That, that's right there. So that would be good for strapping down stuff. Those are the things that I like. And to be honest, the things that I don't like, exterior-wise, I like it. I like the olive green color. I like the DRLs. So for me... Taste-wise, exterior, I do like it. So I have nothing bad to say about the exterior. It even comes with uh, roof rails, which as overlanders, we love that. That means you can just easily mount a roof tent, an awning, and all the other stuff straight to the cabin of the Maxxis. It's not written in a brochure, but I consider, I always look at these roof rails. Some, some pickups, they come with plastic roof rails. So in short, you can't, it's for decorative purposes. Maxxis, seem to have designed this to be used it's solid it's i think it's made of aluminum and it's bolted down and it feels significant so i think you can actually load stuff into that so i have to research some more what the exact reading is but it's not written anywhere but it does feel solid good job maxis these are some of the things you can do as a simple up upgrade to all the pickups that you have or in this particular case we have the Maxxis T60 and we did this build which is just over two hours so let me just show you a simple overland build um, the Maxxis T60 bare bed we put a bed rack which is adjustable in height so if we're going up or down no matter how high your pickup we could adjust this height 
and we have attached the awning, a 2.5 Adventure Kings awning, 2.5 by 2.5 meters to give you this magnificent shade. And of course, don't forget your king camping chair. And last but not the least, when you have these bed racks, we've fitted Max Tracks here on the other side. And it just makes it, makes it look cool. And when we're in any sticky situations, we're gonna put that on. One thing to note here is these bed racks, if you look at the rails, are just clipped on. So we don't put any holes in the pickup bed. You don't scratch your bed, you don't put any holes, and it's sturdy. As you can see, the whole truck moves with it. And that's what's good about these bed racks. So this is a simple demonstration of how simple an upgrade can be and how useful it can be for any pickup or overlander. Hey, that's it, the grand premiere. How do you guys like it? <laughs> so that was the Maxxis T60 and see Liam actually got that right. Hi. So, so guys, um, that was our simple jaunt last weekend and we tried to make everything legal as possible. We coordinated with the barangays, we went with the health checks to make sure, you know, everything's good. So, um, and just to be clear, we are not paid by Maxus. okay? Yeah, this, this is not a sponsored not, video. This is not a sponsored video. This is not a paid content, okay? This is something that, you know, uh, when we launched it uh, with that uh, truck and Maxus approached us, we said, hey, why not? Uh, we, we would love to see what the T60 can do. And we really did it out of, you know, for the love of what we, we, we do for overlanding and doing this thing. So yeah, you know what guys, sorry to disappoint the F-150 fans. Um, <laughs> the, well, I got like six comments that the F-150 would be our uh, truck to do. But you know what, Ford, tonight. Ford here we go. Maybe Ford, if you're watching, if you're watching tonight, Ford. We'll be happy to line up the F-150 and do a similar type of review and see what, what this is about. You know, honestly, I'm personally uh, stoked about that F-150 too. Like, I, I got like two nights where I couldn't sleep just looking at all the... <laughs> <laughs> Just looking at all the upgrades, uh, but, you know, cooling was seats. <laughs> wasn't it a breath of, breath of fresh air also after all that searching that you had? And, and then you see the Maxus for a change and it gets your mind off it. Uh, it was a pleasant surprise for me, Joel. What, do you, what, do you, what are your thoughts on it? Initial thoughts? Uh, the, the initial thought, Stan Kui says, Stan Kui says, I know. Nice feature, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Stan. Thanks, Stan. Uh, thanks, Stan. Sama ako pag Ford. Okay, and then we got John Mendoza said, Ford F-150. Ah! Yeah. Don't and worry. You know, we, we, we respect have... both sides. <laughs> For sure. Unbiased here. We're, we're, uh, we're open to it. But, you know, we have so many new viewers now. We're up to 39. It's bouncing back up to 40. And if it's your first time joining us, we just want to say welcome to the show. It's so nice to have you here. We just did a quick overview video of the Maxxis T60. And we're going to be discussing now next a little bit of our thoughts and impressions on that. Just to go a little bit deeper. And if you're watching yeah. for the first time and if you're here for the first time, why don't you leave us a comment and say hello. We'd love to say hello to you as well. Yes. Alex, Alex Senzon says... Robert, Jonah, Rivera, they're okay to line up the F-150, please. We'll talk to you after the show. <laughs> so give us, a, give us a message. We'll be happy to, to chat about it. But tonight, tonight, our show, so we're going to talk about the T-60. Okay, Jake, T60. what was your impression? Okay, yeah. you know what? When I, when I first saw the T-60 at the shop, when you guys were setting it up for the, for the shoot, I was... Initially, I'm really impressed with, uh, with the overall exterior. Like, like, I think we are in both agreement that the exterior of the vehicle is actually, it actually looks really good. And I don't Pogi think we have much... Eh, Pogi, yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah, it looks good. There's no, I have nothing bad to say about the looks. 
It's uh, to me, it's appealing. Again, looks is very subjective, but I think to both of us, Joe, sure. we were. It actually grew on us uh, throughout the whole day. Uh, initially, we were like, "Oh, this is a good-looking car. The the colorway was nice, the the overall styling of it was nice." And then throughout the day, as we were shooting it, and as we were, we we had a lot of downtime, also, we were just chilling and staring at the T60 for a while, just to really absorb and. Uh, and to just uh, appreciate the outside of it and it grew on us and i think by the end of the yeah. day we were we were like this is a good looking car good looking truck i wouldn't mind having this and i'd be a proud owner of a of a t60 especially with the looks of that like look at the front end yeah, so uh, it's aggressive uh i think good proportions uh what else joel what do you, what else do you think about it no you know when I when I was I I I have nothing I already said in the video I have nothing I I can't say anything wrong about the exterior it looks fantastic with that olive green color the yeah. whole time we were driving this I could I felt proud I was there you go I, there you go I said it I felt <laughs> proud I was driving such a thing like I I think when we were in C five driving there was someone who did this to yeah, you in the truck got a, beside us you actually got a good uh, <laughs> thumbs up from someone along I the got way. a thumbs up from a random guy. In C5, that, so you know that normally <laughs> just happens to you on your 79, <laughs> and look, it no, happened to uh, <laughs> on your T on the T60. No, the, the the 79, I just get stares of what in the world is that car? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> <laughs> What's this monstrosity? <laughs> see, yeah, some so, of the comments say Chris says it looks Tacoma. -y. Even see Mendoza John says first gen Tacoma. You know, I think I. It could, they could have gotten inspired from that. I think they also could have gotten inspired from... Uh, what's the other one, Joel? The... Uh, guys, the, the, here's... You know, if you want to check out what this car looks like, it looks like the Mercedes X-Class. Yeah. I think there's some <laughs> inspiration of the X-Class there. Exactly. Yep. Uh, John, we're going to get back to you on the gas consumption. Because, you know, we were also pleasantly surprised with that. <laughs> um... Gas Actually, consumption. Yeah, okay, let's go, put it go. this way. It didn't move a needle back and forth. <laughs> back and forth, <laughs> I, I, yeah. Uh, so, this is Jan, uh, John says, gas consumption. Um, John, I'm sure I cannot accurately give you the exact mileage we had uh, because we weren't too focused on the statistical spots. I think there are a lot written on the brochure about it. It should be around 8, eight to 9 kilometers per liter. But what we were more focused on is how did it drive? And uh, on that thing later, we'll go to that. But we'll finish on the interior. What do you get? Uh, interior. We're done with the exterior. Okay. Like, what do you think with the In interior? Go ahead. Okay. Interior-wise, uh, for me, okay. again, they, in terms of the styling, I was actually impressed. And as you saw when I first saw it, I opened the door and I took a step back just to see it first from a distance and really appreciate the layout and to be honest i was uh, pleasantly surprised with the layout and how they styled it uh in terms of materials that's i guess where it it, it changes a little bit um it, the materials are not as premium i would say uh, especially when you touch it and you feel it but in terms of looks it definitely has some premium look to it and i wouldn't really say it, it's a cheap car it is, like I said, this yep. is something I would be proud to uh, to, to to drive. Uh, maybe other maybe other things that I would uh, note are aside from it looking good, maybe the craftsmanship in terms of it was how it was put together was a little bit um, how I'd say this rushed. <laughs> That's how I how, how I'd say it a little bit, but again. Uh, what, what are you paying for? You have to ask yourself again. What, what's the amount you're paying for and what are you getting out of it? So, yeah, That's for right. interior, I, was, I, was, I wasn't too uh, disappointed. I was uh, actually happy about it. Especially that screen. That screen was actually very... Uh, it was, it, I think that's the larger screen because this is the high-end model. So this is a 10-inch mm -hmm. screen. It was responsive. Uh, before you go, Joe, can I give a little tech, tech, tech talk on the, on the, on the, on the stereo system? So Go in terms of responsiveness, the, the touch screen was very responsive. I know there are some touch screens that are ha you have to like push a little harder to get it going. But what I noticed about the, the interface, it was actually responsive. It was actually uh, 
since it was actually easy to navigate certain times because the buttons were big and clear but where i struggled was pairing my device because it wasn't properly labeled how do i get to the bluetooth settings how do i put it together maybe uh, there was it was just a learning curve like of course you're just gonna do that once when you buy this car you're gonna do it once and you're paired for the rest of the time but then uh, initial setup was a little difficult i tried to use the android auto i had to install an app which i'm not so sure uh how how i like that but it was i actually didn't get to pair it to android auto but i was eventually able to pair it to bluetooth so in terms of pairing that's where i struggled a bit but the quality <coughs> of the screen was was good how about you joel thanks jake um Guys, we're the Overland show, so I better give some Overland perspective. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> okay. Off-road capability. So I've been in Athrun. How's the off-road capability? Okay, Athrun. We were nice enough not to kill it. Okay. We didn't uh, <laughs> put it. <laughs> we didn't. Uh, do, we we didn't do any rock crawling. <laughs> we didn't go rock crawling on it. Um, <laughs> there, there. It, it does have hill descent control. The, it does not have a diff locker. Um, there was four high, four low. It's shift on fly. Uh, it's a Borg Warner uh, transmission. So I guess that's a good thing. Um, the engine, 2.8. I think it's on the big side. It's not high on the power, but definitely adequate to get us where we want. Um, I was hitting... Uh, it, it can, the turbo also cooks in below 2,000 RPM. So it did have the grunt. Now, okay, let me give that perspective. Everybody who's thinking about this car might be coming from a more modern ute. So if you're coming, let's say, from a Fortuner or anything with a big displacement car with a turbo or a modern D4D, this car might feel a little bit down on power. Where I'm coming from, I'm coming from a Land Cruiser 796 inline 18Z. What does that mean? No turbo. So everything with a turbo for me feels faster than it should be. So, in that sense, I'd say it was adequate. Now, also note, we did not load the bed. So, if you're carrying 400, 600 uh, uh, kilos in the back, uh, it might change a little bit on how it hauls, right? John Mendoza, turbo. Yes, uh, it's a 2.8 turbo diesel. It does have a turbo, that's correct. Um, can we see the engine bay? Sure, give me a second. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, let me help you, Joel, first. Uh, well... Yeah, can you uh, check that out for me, bro? Yeah, let me ride. finish this part. Sure, go ahead. So, um, it's a 2.8 liter. Here. Yeah, we're talking about interiors, right, Jake? Yes. I'm just looking for the picture that we, uh, that we wanted to check out. Hey guys, we appreciate all these comments. This is why it's a live stream review. <laughs> so <laughs> head on, shoot us, shoot us what you want to see, and we'll be happy to show you. Yeah, while you're looking for that picture, Joel, uh, you know, yeah. the ride as a passenger was, um, I would say, a little rough. Like you said, the back end kind of kept bouncing. But again, that could be a pro and con, especially you have to, again, ask yourself, are you going to be using this as a daily driver? Or are you planning to use it really to load it up and really use, the, use that weight capacity and fill it up? And once you fill it up, that, that ride should smoothen out a little bit. So again, in terms of a overland perspective, of course, your back is going to be pretty loaded up and that ride should, should uh, soften up just a little bit. Yep. John, here's the picture of the engine bay. So that's how it looks like. So it's a 2.8 VGT. Uh, yeah. There mm -hmm. it is. I have a closer shot of it. Here you go. There you go. So I think maybe as an overlander, if we check out, the, it, it, we're going back to these questions. So we'll just go with your questions and we'll answer it right away if we can. Uh, I like where the airbox is. The airbox is, load, is mounted quite high on the right side. So it's not down low. So that means your waiting depth would be higher. We, we didn't drown the car up to that waiting depth. <laughs> but generally, <laughs> uh, but generally, but when, when we're, <laughs> of course not. But uh, generally where it's mounted, I would say it's high enough. 
Um, I did see the brochure list and it did have accessories for a snorkel. So if that's an option that you want to do, uh, yeah, that, that can be done to the Maxxis T60. Um, okay, I'm going to go back to that interior. Guys, throw in your uh, questions. Go ahead. Louis Fong, is it IFS or live axle? Um, it's a leaf spring in the back and IFS up front. So it's your typical dual cab, uh, dual cab setup. Um, what I will note, one to ten, if like five is like comfort, this will lean towards the hard side of things. So it does that live axle in the back is quite bumpy. Uh, yeah, not worse than the Hilux or Land Cruiser seventy nine, but generally I think it's standard fare for pickup. But if maybe you compare it to a Navara. Definitely the Navara would write better. That's, that's what I would say about it. Um, okay, let's go back to the interiors. The interior for me is a mismatch of right and wrong things. Um, I like how they put in uh, this uh, here. I like how they put in the touchscreen. It has, uh, gives you like vehicle condition. It gives you all this premium feels. The only thing that I would change is put a leather, leather wrap on the steering wheel. You know, for me, that would change the game in terms of how you feel. Because as a driver, when we're, when we're driving long distances, we like to, the, the, the surfaces we touch is crucial. But given that, it also has all leather seats. Back room, leg room was good. So yeah, that's my, that's my take on the, the interior. Big space in the back, uh, as good as amenities would go. What else would you add, Jake? <laughs> um, what else? What else? What else? You know, aside from that, I think uh, I think that well, cup, we did a cup holder test. <laughs> it was we did a cup holder test. We did a, you can, it, well, as overlanders, we really value our cup holders. <laughs> all right, let's put that out there. Go ahead, Jake. What about the cup holders? What did we find with our cup holders? Uh, we had to find that photo. Oh, yeah, look for the photo there. So we had a total of, I think. There's two up front, two in the center. Uh, there's two in the back. So you have a total of uh, six. Yes, uh, John Mendoza is asking again. Rear seat storage. Yes, definitely there is a little bit of storage. It's not a lot. No, not, not good. You only have the back seat storage. <laughs> and a little bit of the... No, no you, you can cup, cup holders on the side. Yes, yes rear seat storage. Side. <laughs> but in the rear seat, I actually tested it, Joel. I don't think you were there when I tested it. You could lift the seat up. And uh, there's a little storage under it, and also you can drop the back seat. When you drop the back, the backrest. When you drop the backrest, there's like uh, two hollow spots where you could fit. I think uh, maybe just a few of your safety gear there. Not too much, but there's a little bit of storage. I wouldn't say it's a lot compared to the yep. other the other trucks around, but there's a little bit. I wouldn't say there's none. There's a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. Here Thanks is for the questions, our. John. Thanks for the questions. Yeah. <laughs> this okay. is our morning. Here we go. This is our test that nobody does on review, so don't judge us. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it passes the eating test, the drinking test, the breakfast test, this is the lunch test. So eating. <laughs> If you don't like eating in your car, then you were probably not an overlander. <laughs> so we did the coffee and cup holder test good. Yeah. Eating inside the car test is good also. Yeah. <laughs> Maxus, so, don't worry. We didn't do a spill test. <laughs> Maxus, we cleaned it up. The car is detailed back in the shop, so it's all good to go. <laughs> <laughs> but it, you know it, what? It, as as a yeah. as a lifestyle lifestyle truck, we're talking about interior exterior. Then we'll go to driving impressions. Here we go. So, um, these are some things that we did while we're on location, and I think I want to show this. This is the one of the advantages when you're running a pickup. And check this out. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, that's the nice thing about pickups. You have that workspace. 
<laughs> so, and, I, know, what I like about the pickup is a table, right? You can use it as a table. Right? Yeah. Table, a chair, a bed, go, go for it. <laughs> So I think the, the advantages of having a pickup here, like what, the, what we did with the Maxus is uh, we put that lifestyle check in the back, like lifestyle look. So we put those bars, which gives us flexibility to load stuff over your bed. So you don't have to fill up the bed with, with stuff, right? And we're able to use that surface as a coffee nook to do your afternoon tea, afternoon coffee uh, for, for, yeah. For very, very lifestyle. So, you know, all these checks for me, check for overland lifestyling. Yes, definitely. And that's actually just one of the, the ways you can set it up. There's so much more ways, especially when it's a pickup. There's, you have flexibility. And uh, like I think in our, in our Comparo show, when we were talking about the pickups, one of the things we really liked about the, the Maxis was the price. So the fact that you can save a little get a brand new get brand new truck you're not buying something uh, second hand uh, yes yep. you may be able to get something second hand but you're gonna spend to change the belts to change the, the certain things that you really need to the hoses all of the things you need to change will all add up and you're getting a brand new car for this and guys just to just to be clear again we're, this is not a sponsored video uh, Maxis is not uh, paying us or putting any uh, requirement on us to say good things but to be honest uh we have good things to say <laughs> yeah yeah definitely. Um, john mendoza says the price yes the price is 1.328 and I'll there's a promo again. right uh, now there's a promo yeah uh price is 1.3 eight, but with the promo is less fifty thousand. so right now 1.278 yeah, so for that price, you're getting the, the highest pesos. model. That's the highest model, and it's 4x4. Four four. So I think other brands, about you can, you can get something similar, but it's not the highest end model, correct? That's right. So you're, you're getting the highest end model for that price. Plus, you got some room to uh, put in your drawers in the back, <laughs> put your roof tent, put your, put your awning. When That's the advantage. When we reviewed this, I think this topped out in some of our uh, top rigs for overlanding. It's just because of this price value, right? Yeah, it's the price um, value. Again, guys, looks like it's not. Before we give the f summary of that, Jake, why don't we play the... Let's talk about the driving impressions, yeah? Yeah, sure, sure, uh, sure. Because we're, heading, we're about to head out to the overall value of this car. And, you know, yes. I, uh, let's, let's show how this looks like. And we'll talk over this. Okay. So here's some video of how this car drove on uh, where we took it last weekend. Good morning. Good morning. Early. It's early. It's early. It's been a while since I woke up this early. It's been, it's been a while I woke up. <laughs> <laughs> So we're taking out the Maxus for a spin today off to some trails and so first impressions, Jake, what do you think? First impressions, you know what? I like the looks, especially walking up to the car from the outside. I was like, it's a, it has a decent look, looks good. Uh, interior wise, it's also alright. I mean build quality can be a little bit improved on, but you know what? It's it's not bad. Not horrible. Let's take it for a spin. Let's take it for a spin and let's yeah, and we'll give you a verdict after. So that river cross was not deep, okay? That was like ankle deep. <laughs> it really looks good, that green. <laughs> yeah, I really like that green. Okay, let's talk about driving impressions. You know, when I was driving the car, um, steering is on the light side, uh, power is adequate, and then ride is bumpy. That's basically my driving impression of it. 
Uh, mm -hmm. Will you be disappointed with it? No. Can it go off-road? Yes, it's 4x4. Four four. Um, the only thing probably is what we said in the video. It can't, you can't change the rims as of now because there, nobody has a size for it. But uh, yeah, but generally, man, and you, it's, you know, it's a modern pickup. <laughs> yeah. And you know what, Joel? I think, uh, yeah, one of the things, I guess, it, uh, in our last show, I think we discussed a little bit about the need when we choose for when we choose a rig that we need to have that aftermarket support. I'm, I can't really say right now how the aftermarket support of this is uh, in terms of availability of parts and upgrades. Like in terms of suspension, would you know if there's any uh, upgradable suspension to this? Uh, right, right now I don't think there's a fit suspension that's specifically for yeah. Maxus yet, but. I don't think it's something that would be difficult because yeah. uh, this is something that I think suspensions would be upgradable. Yes, uh, and you know I would what, believe right? so. And you know what? I think again, what's our perspective? We're not. We are not definitely rock crawlers. We are not off road. We're not extreme off roaders. We are overlanders. So we go long distances, and an, a two inch if two inch lift will definitely help you. But for our needs, I think something like this will suffice. I think there have been we've been we've gone on certain trips. People have brought stock cars, so it's not a problem. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Louis Louis Fong had said, you know what, Louis, where did you guys go to test that's, this car? That's this Joe's is backyard. <laughs> that's Joe's backyard. <laughs> <laughs> that's just there, right behind. That's in a that's in. Louis, we will tell you later. <laughs> uh, this is as close to the F-150 as we've gotten because it's the same place uh, that, we, that, that the F-150 shot. That's all I'm going to say for now. But you know what? Before we give our overall impression, before we close it up on yeah. what we think the Maxus would be, just a special thanks to Maxus Philippines. Uh, thank you, Maxus Philippines. Give a round of applause. Thank you, Maxus. So thank you, Maxus Philippines. Thank you for lending us the car and uh, trusting us to, you know, to uh, do a little bit of testing with your car. And a special shout out to Sir Tony. So special thanks to Sir Tony for making this possible. So yeah. So again, uh, yeah. Thank you, Maxus. Okay, let's close this up. Overall impressions, bro. Overall impressions. Okay, I'll go ahead. So you know, basically, guys. Uh, after testing it, after riding it, um, yes, there's hit and miss. Uh, maybe, like I mentioned, the build quality of the interior could, could be improved on in terms of the workmanship and ship and how it was put together. But overall, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be sad sitting in that car. I wouldn't be too too uh, too miserable in that car. I would actually be proud to be sitting in that car. Uh, because also I paid for I paid a decent price for it. <laughs> so one point the price you said was one point three two eight, and that's uh, the highest uh, highest model in their line. That's the four x four model. You're not getting diff locks. You're not getting the other fluff, but you're getting a brand new car without the headaches of a second hand car. You are paying a premium. You're paying a a, 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 a price that is not too big and that leaves you room to play around with with your upgrades with your overland upgrades so you can buy your freezer you can buy your roof tent you can put your your bed rack you can do a lot of things um, you may not be able to buy your bumper your rear bumper your suspension but for an overlander it's not it's not really about that right now so you can maybe down the line people will start to create some aftermarket parts for it but Again, guys, we're overlanders and we, we, we just want to go the long distance and find places that haven't really been explored yet. So uh, uh, the Maxxis T60 is definitely something that you could take with you. Um, aside from that, uh, exterior, it's great. It drives well. And when I drove it, I didn't feel like I lacked too much power. I personally had a Ford Ranger 2015 before. And I was telling Joel while we were driving that uh, it didn't feel too different from that. And I actually felt like I had a little more power in the T60. Like I could punch it a little bit if I needed to overtake or if I needed to get out of trouble. So yep. that's great. To me, uh, yes, it's a, it's a definite yes. If it's, in, if it's something that's within my budget that I need, that I, that I can afford. 
and I would definitely consider the T60 Maxxis. Awesome. Yep. Liam says, the biggest difference between the F-150 and the Maxxis <laughs> T60, the price. The price. Again, you know what guys, I, my overall take, okay, now let's sum that all up, right? Uh, is the Maxxis going to be for everyone out there? The answer is no. Um, there are still things that needs to be improved, don't get us wrong. But is there a market for this? Is there someone who would want this product? I would say yes. Because at the end of the day, if you want... There, there will, there will, the main debate here is, why don't I just get a Hilux E, right, Jake? Uh, yeah. Because like, that's, that's uh, about the same price, I think, right? Somewhere there. A Hilux E might be lower, more tunable with all of that. Yes, but on the flip side, if you like a little bit of convenience, right? You got, you got the 10-inch screen up there already. It's four-wheel drive. Um, I like the look, olive green. You got the roof rails. It comes with a spray-on bed liner. If you don't want to worry about that, it's automatic. Uh, I like automatic transmissions for weirdly, right? I mean, city drive, right? Especially anything city, below, yeah. City and one point three million. Anything below one point three million four x four would be a manual. So that's a sticking point. So uh, my take as an overlander for the Maxus is, wow, this is tough. I would give it <laughs> one to ten. In my books, maybe a six or a seven, all right? And that's not a bad thing because a uh, good start for a China car. And uh, yeah, it's diesel, it's automatic, uh, it's a brand new car. Guys, look at if I check the spec list, it's pretty hard to fault. It, Maxus is giving a five year warranty in this thing, right? Uh, yeah. The, the, uh, the, the pros outweigh the cons. And guys, you might have a lot of misconceptions about China Car, but I do hope that Maxus is able to sustain this. You know, one of the things that I trust here is the Ayala Corporation. So it's the same guys behind Isuzu and uh, Kia, if I'm not mistaken. And I don't think they would risk their reputation just to bring in something that they cannot sustain. So they must see something here that we're not seeing. And you know what? Maybe we can't give a verdict yet on how it will do on the long run. But first impressions, a quick, quick weekend uh, drive. Man, this is a pretty good. Quick rundown of spec list. Electronic stability control. Hill descent assist. Apple CarPlay. Four-wheeled high, four-wheeled low. Keyless remote, yes. Tire pressure monitoring system. Uh, splash guard. Spray on bed liner. Uh, looks like a stiff and solid roof rail. For 1.278 as of today, until the end of the month, until July 31. I mean, value. For me, value. value and yeah. like what, uh, what, uh, what was it? Sir Liam? Sir Liam says the biggest difference is price. If you're a, a budget-conscious overlander, I don't think you can get anything better than this in terms of value. So For a brand new car, definitely. Yeah. You know, yeah. I really like the, the, the wireless TPMS. That's a feature yep. that I was surprised in. Like when I sat in the driver's seat and I saw it pop up on the screen, I mm -hmm. said, there's, there's a TPMS here, wireless. <laughs> Joel's like, yeah, definitely. And I was surprised because that's a feature that not many uh, cars have at that price point. It's usually an aftermarket thing you'll have to add in and it's not even integrated into the multimedia system. So this one, it's fully integrated into your, your, your car system. Oh yeah. So I think yeah. also about the the system, right? There's a there's a nice feature in the in the interface. You can actually check your car health, right? Car health, yeah, yeah. yeah it, I it, saw it, that. Like, it gives you like a rating of one to one hundred how healthy your car is. It'll let you know when to change the oil, when to change a certain other parts, when to do maintenance. Um, you know, there's there was a lot to it. I I couldn't even go through all the things it could give you in terms of information, but. That was something new to me to see. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Uh, Louis Fong says, uh, I'm hearing a lot of good things about Maxus. The engine I heard is from Leyland of England. Yeah, it's an LDV. That's the brand name for it. Uh, <laughs> Louis, I think this is your shortest show ever. Thank you. <laughs> Thank I can you. see that you want us off air already. <laughs> <laughs> Liam says T60 versus Kia K25. Liam, you know what? I think the K25 has a different crowd because that's like a 
that's a whole different there's a you don't, you're not getting much for the price but there's yep. so much also you can do so that's the yep. difference this one you're paying a, a, also a, a decent price but you're getting already all the, the extra stuff that that you wouldn't you'd have to pay for if it was another vehicle i have a feeling if this car is stiff and we if we add a what do you call it if we add a k25 to the, to the mix i think the stiff level will jump 10 more notches bro yeah it's gonna, jump, <laughs> it's gonna be a it's gonna be a, a horse that has not yet been uh, tamed <laughs> <laughs> but 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 okay <laughs> kia if you're watching and you want to and you want to prove us wrong we'll be happy to test the k25 for you <laughs> As long as and, it's beige, uh, we'll, safari, uh, was this safari beige? <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, Sahara. And it Sahara. has to be in Sahara, Sahara. beige. Sahara beige. <laughs> Jen Guevara says, yeah, love to hear from you guys listening right now. Well, Jen, thank you for joining us. And we're getting a lot of feedback and questions about the Maxa. So, you know, that's a good thing. Okay, guys, uh, we're, we're at that point now where we're, we're, we can now focus on more of your questions. If you want to make pahabol, if you want to say anything or allow us to answer anything, just uh, post it down below in the comment section and we'll get back to you. This is your time now for us to really focus on your comments. So I hope you guys can uh, do that for us. But, you know, this was a really surprising experience for me. Uh, it was my yeah. first time in a Maxus. Um, and yeah, definitely something surprising for definitely for me. Louis says Kia and Maxus are reframed distributors. Yes, yeah. yes we know. Yes, yes. And yeah, uh, hi, Sir Tony. If you can hook us up with a Kia K25, <laughs> <laughs> we will review it for you. Uh, yeah, so let's see, what do we have else? You know what, guys, hit us in the comments, let us know what you guys think. Do you guys think the Maxus is something that you would buy? Or is that something that you would pass on? Give it the value. Give us, a, give us your comments. Give us a like button. Let us know what you think. Hi, Jake. I know. We're on episode 10. Would you believe that, bro? Episode 10. 10 weeks. Can you believe it? Crave. This, uh... uh <laughs> we, that deserves an air horn. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'm just showing some final pics of this. So, you know what, guys? I'm going to close up the show if the, and uh, let you guys enjoy the rest of the night. So, uh, Jake, final words. Final words. Um, you know, Maxus is a, uh, definitely a, a truck to, to look out for, to consider in terms of if you're looking for a new truck to build. Uh, I wouldn't really put it off my list, especially for the price. It's something worth it. Um, it's something that is definitely usable for overlanding. So yeah, Maxus, good job. Thank you again for allowing us to, to drive your vehicle. Um, there's a comment here, Mark Anthony, not sure if you already mentioned it. What didn't you like about it? Okay, for those who are just hey, joining now. We'll, yep, uh, go ahead, Jake. Do what recap. I didn't like about it. We will it. tell you what we don't like about it. Yeah. <laughs> for, yeah, so for those who are just joining and you may have missed the what we didn't like part, we didn't like too much of the the ride it was bouncy we didn't give it a good score in terms of comfort for the ride but what we were saying is if we're using it for overlanding you're going to definitely fill that bed up with more gear which will hopefully we didn't get to test it fully because we didn't load it to max capacity but that should definitely tame out the ride a little bit and then for me another thing i didn't like too much was the build quality of the interior it looked nice but then once you touch it and once you feel it a little bit more it wasn't too premium in terms of the feel but looks wise i, I didn't really have a problem with it uh, other things i didn't like was that you can't upgrade the rims because there's nothing at the moment that can fit it uh joel how about you what are the other stuff that you didn't like about it i said there were the steering wheels not leather and i can just nitpicking yeah. Uh, and the card holder that could slot in all the coins might disappear. <laughs> but when you think <laughs> you about never it, retrieve. it's all nitpicking stuff. And I think we really can't say now for reliability and maintenance, of course, because right. this is a new car. But that would definitely be a factor in the long run. But 
you know, it has that health feature <laughs> in the in the in the head unit. So if you're not listening to it when to change the oil, that's that's not on you. That's not on the vehicle anymore. <laughs> that's right. So, uh, yeah. So that was our recap. So Mark, hope that we answered your questions. Yeah. And again, thank you for tuning and throwing in your questions for us. Uh, we really appreciate it. Yes, Max, thank you so much for your generosity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead, Joel. Uh, Robert says here, Alexander sends on. Let's hook it up, bro. Uh, thank you. Whatever we're hooking up, I'm not sure. <laughs> <but> <laughs> Whatever this is hooking up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we'll be happy to talk after the show. We'll, we'll, we'll be happy to review it for you. I think this is for the F-150. But yeah, um, my take, let's see, my take. My final words on it is, yeah, Maxis, Maxis is something that I would give a shot maybe. Uh, long run, we don't know. But with a five-year warranty, maybe you got some, uh, something going there. I don't know what the resale value would be too because uh, we don't know how these brands are. There's a big stigma for Chinese brands, but it might be a good shot. So guys, once again, this has been a good show with you guys and we don't want to drag it further. And uh, I'm- Hey, you know, you know me what? And Jake are happy. Yeah. Can, can I interrupt before you end? The Maxus yeah. guys is a good pair. If, you're, if you just want a simple daily driver and you pair it up with the Avenger box, right? So. That's a good pair in my book. Like you're not paying too much for your pickup if you don't have a pickup. Yep. And then you just yep. put in your Avenger box. That's a that's another another good setup right there. Alex sends us a Joel. Jonas said okay to test the F one fifty. All oh. right. Let's message Let's you see. later. We'll, we'll see talk. later how it goes. Thank you. <laughs> so there, that. let's wrap up the show. Uh, yeah. once again this is this is Joel. And this is my partner Jake. And you know, we've just finished our first official live stream, live stream review of, of a pickup truck. And you know, guys, if you have friends who are not joined Overland Show, yes, invite them to join us every Tuesday, 9 p.m. to 10 p.m. where we talk about reviews, cars, setups, travel, destinations. And we've got something in store for you the next couple of weeks. It'll be something to do probably with our tummy and how we cook food Ooh, and every exciting. other stuff. Yeah, so... We, 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 as you can see, this is for the love of it. We, uh, we, we love doing this and we love overlanding. We love the adventure lifestyle and we love for you guys to share it with us. So do hit us a message on overlanding if you have any things that you want to know, you want to ask us, you want to support us. Just hit that like button, both on YouTube and Facebook. Tell your friends. We're going to be on every Tuesday. So once again, this is Jake and Joel and this has Thanks, been guys. the Overland Show. We will see you next week. I forgot, I forgot, I forgot, forgot. I still have 25 viewers. By the way, guys, Louis was asking where in the world did we shoot that. I want to give a big shout out to my friend, Brian. Thank you for allowing us to use your place. That place is called the Camp Boa. And yeah, if you're still tuning in, then you know where it is. But uh, yeah, hit, look them up. I think uh, they'll be open soon. But uh, yeah, uh, check out Camp Boa. Um, yeah, Camp Boa in Santa Ines. And make sure to coordinate with them. I'm sure they'll hook you up. So, Thank you, thank you. We'll see you soon. Thank you, Maxus. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Kamboa. Check us out on Overland Kings. Good night! Good night.